There we go. All right. So um, I am going to mess it up. You just told me Mahan. Yes. <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, is joining us today for the Tunnel Vision series. And she's a recent graduate of Colorado School of Mines, where she earned her master's degree in geotechnical engineering. And she's now starting her career as a graduate tunnel engineer at AROP. So, um, man, why don't you take it away? Perfect. Thank you, Shulia. So as Shulia mentioned, uh, I'm Mahan, and I'm a recent graduate, Colorado School of Mines. And I got my master's in geotechnical, and I got my bachelor's in petroleum engineering. I know it's a little bit different, but <laughs> I kind of like found my way through geotechnical, and I uh, got a chance to work with Dr. Mike Mooney, and um, he was the main reason I got into tunneling. So I got really inspired by him. And uh, before joining Arab, I uh, did an internship with Kill the Underground, which that was definitely one of the best experiences I ever had because I got to learn about trenchless technology and um, I'll forever be grateful for that. And um, I joined Arab in uh, late January. So it's been a month and a half and um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I like it. I like here. Uh, the people are really supportive, nice. And in my free time, I love to see movies. I'm a true movie buff, and um, uh, I'm a sportsy person too. So I would love to go skiing, tennis, and hiking. So enough about me. I'm going to talk about um, quantification of foam loss in conditioned soils. So the pre presentation is consists of an introduction, an objective of our study, the methodology and the setup that we came up. And in the end, I'm gonna talk about the results and discussion. So when we were talking about conditioned soils, like the, uh, the question would pop up like, why we're gonna use conditioned soils and where are we gonna use them? So as we all know, uh, EPB tunneling is one of the widely used methods in uh, constructing a tunnel. And uh, it will it, it uses the excavated soil as a support medium to support the face of the TBM. But uh, the majority of times uh, that, uh, the excavated soil by itself cannot be used as uh, the, the supporting soil paste because there might be some clogging issues in the face or uh, in the chamber or like flowing into the chamber or even like when we want to um, transfer the excavated soil from uh, from the chamber through the uh, conveyor belt like outside. So this is where conditioners um, come in handy, uh, especially foam. So uh, whenever we are dealing with foam, uh, we are um, constantly uh, talking about two foam properties, which is like FER and FIR. FER or like foam expansion ratio is defined as the ratio volume of foam to volume of foaming solution. And the FIR is defined as foam injection ratio. And it's defined as the volume of foam to volume soil. And it's uh, usually defined as a percentage. Um, so as we said, um, to um, to modify the properties of the excavated soil, uh, conditioners come in handy. And uh, the reason why is because we wanna have like a safe operation and optimal performance of the TBM. And when we're talking about the desired modified properties, we're talking about low hydraulic conductivity. And the reason this is important, it's because um, whenever we are um, excavating um, below the water ground table, uh, water spewing, spewing can be an issue. And the reason water spewing happens is because cohesive soils have a uh, high permeability. So by conditioning the cohesive soils and um, this will result in a lower hydraulic conductivity and water spewing, uh, the risk of water spewing can be uh, eliminated or it can get lowered uh, significantly. And the second properties can be uh, is high compressibility. So by adding foam to our uh, excavated soil, the foam air bubbles will like go uh, in between the soil material and the air bubble can um, result in, in increasing the compressibility of the soil. And by increasing the high compressibility and by increasing the compressibility of the soil, uh, we can have, um, we can, um, 
uh, have a better control at the chamber pressure. And uh, it can actually, we, ha we could have better control at the face pressure as well. And besides these two major properties, um, conditioned soils can help in reducing the tool wear at the face of the TBM. And also it can help in the flow of the material in the chamber and the conveyor belt, which can be really useful. Um, so when we are conditioning the soil, there's this question that comes that, uh, so how so how long this foam is gonna be stable or like how long we're gonna have that desire of properties, uh, which we would refer it as foam stability. So that there are three mechanisms that would uh, affect the foam stability, which are liquid drainage, coalescence, and coarsening. So the liquid drainage, which is the focus of this study, uh, it, it happens when immediately after the foam is generated, the liquid and the foam um, tends to drain due to the force of gravity, in which and this will this process can lead to foam bubbles, um, like uh, getting close to each other, and the thin bubble film would get ruptured and the bubble would get destroyed. The foam would get destroyed. And other than force of gravity, uh, another thing that can uh, affect the liquid drainage is the absorption capacity of soil. So, uh, for example, if the soil has a high absorption capacity, it would uh, absorb the liquid in the foam and it would accelerate the liquid drainage and thus um, the foam would get less stable and the foam loss would be high. Um, just uh, the coalescence of course, and since I've mentioned here, I have put in a uh, schematic just to have an understanding of coalescence and coarsening. So coalescence happens when two bubbles, the thin bubble, the, the bubble, the film bubbles uh, kind of like get thin and uh, bubbles would uh, approach to each other and the film would get ruptured and the two bubble would uh, merge together and form a bigger bubble. And coarsening is when a, a smaller bubble, uh, the gas that it has, it would dissolve in the uh, surrounding liquid, and eventually uh, the gas would uh, diffuse in the larger bubble. So the smaller bubble would get smaller and smaller, and the and the bigger bubble would get bigger and bigger, and thus uh, the foam would get less stable. Um, so to have a better understanding of foam stability, it can help us uh, to, I'm sorry, to, to better understand the foam stability, um, we try to um, come up with a methodology to experimentally determine the foam loss in soils and how we can simulate uh, what is happening in the chamber of TBMs and bring it in our uh, lab and just do uh, experimentally test it and see like how uh, the foam would react under pressure and in different soils and what could be the range of foam loss. And by understanding that, it can help us in recommendation of foam injection ratios or FIRs. So let me, uh, so, so how we uh, come up with this methodology is that we, uh, we came up, we figured that we should three stages. So the first stage would be the saturation of the native soil, like the soil specimen. And the second stage would be um, conditioning that uh, saturated soil and uh, generate a conditioned soil. And the stage three would be um, resaturation of that condition. So, so let me just get in details with that. So stage one, in order to saturate our um, soil, we needed a sealed cylinder and we needed two saturated pore stones, which the first one would be placed in the bottom. And uh, based on our targeted bulk density, we would have uh, put an amount of soil in the cylinder and compacted to reach the desired uh, targeted bulk density. And on the top, the second uh, saturated pore stone would be placed. And the reason why we are placing these two saturated pore stones is that when we are trying to saturate it, we would have a homogeneous flow in the entire um, system. And in the end, we would have put our cap on the top and we would lock it so it would get sealed and doesn't move when we're saturated. So in order to saturate the whole system, we used a PVC or pressure volume controller, and we used a high pressure of 700 kPa back pressure, and we saturate the whole system from the bottom. And this stage would have continued till there was like no or like negligible um, 
volume ingress, which would typically around like, we would have like let it stay for overnight or uh, just for a whole day. And so by assuring that there's no volume ingress or there's like negligible volume ingress, you would have moved to stage two, which is the stage that we would add the foam. So based on our FIR or foam injection ratio, we would have uh, moved and lift up our cap based on the volume of foam. And we would have locked and sealed it again. And we would inject the foam from the top valve and we, this would have happened under pressure. So the pressure of 200 kPa was um, set to uh, inject a foam into the system. And the reason why 200 is because there was a typical pressure that was observed in the chamber, uh, in the excavation chamber. So uh, by making sure our foam is added and everything is locked and we have a 200 kPa pressure in the cylinder, um, this top cap was, um, connected to, had, was connected to um, a mixing shaft. And this mixing shaft was connected to a speed control motor, which that would result in a rotation uh, movement. So by rotating, by rotating this, this mixing blade uh, would have rotated and would mix the foam with soil. And in order to have a homogeneous mix in our uh, in our system, this whole platform was uh, this whole system was placed on a movable hydraulic jack platform, which would have like an up and down movement. So we would have a rotational movement, and we would have an up and down movement, and that assured us that we have a homogeneous mixture, and it would result in a homogeneous conditioned soil. So by doing that. Uh, the stage three what comes up. So during the mixture of foam and soil together, um, some of the air bubbles of the foam would get ruptured and it would result in these red circles. So these red circles are the ruptured foam bubbles, which would result in air voids in, a, in the system. So by, so when this thing happens, uh, it would result in undesired uh, behavior of the conditioned soil having air voids in our system. So that's why we are uh, targeting uh, how much foam loss uh, can occur in a type of soil and uh, how, how we can compensate for it. So the way that we um, approach this was to, okay, so if we resaturate our system again and just to measure and see uh, how much water is required to saturate these air voids in the system that could uh, lead us to um, to calculate the foam loss in our um, soil. So just to have a better understanding of the test setup, I've provided some pictures here. So this is the whole system right here. And this is our cylinder and our mixing tool here. And um, so from one of these uh, valves, the foam would get injected into the whole system and the bottom valve was used to connect PVC uh, for the saturation and resaturation pressure. And, and here we have uh, our cap, our top cap, which is, this is the mixing shaft, which would connect it to the, um, the control speed motor. And, the sub, and here is our mixing tool, which we use to mix the foam with soil. Um, provided a video to, um, I guess, to show you guys, like, how does it look like? This is one of our samples getting mixed with uh, foam, and um, it's just a short video just to give you an understanding. And um, this picture is actually after the resaturation stage, and as you can see, like, there's still uh, foam left in there. So this was not like 100% foam loss, which was um, really interesting to see. Um, I have provided a set of results here just to show you like how it works. So um, this is two tests. The test one is uh, has been done on silt with a consistency index of 0.5. And the second one is a silt with a consistency index of 0.8. So the reason we chose a consistent index of 0.5 and 0.8 was because uh, 
this range of consistent index has the has the most potential to clog, and also it can provide the optimum. Uh, it can provide the optimum pressure to. I uh, sorry. Uh, it can provide the optimum uh, face pressure. So uh, that's why we target a, a consistent index of 0.5 and 0.8. And the form properties here, FER equals to 10 and FIR equals to 100%. And the reason these values were chosen is because um, it was referred by FNARC or reference. And based on the soil and based on the properties of the soil, um, these were recommended by FNARC. So in the stage one, uh, the stage one happens in the saturation of compacted soil specimen. So uh, the, the soil specimen was, uh, saturated under 700 kPa, and this shows the saturation volume. In the second stage, uh, the pressure, the, I'm sorry, the foam was added, and the foam pressure is 200 kPa. It's shown here, and after the conditioned soil is generated and uh, it's been mixed for uh, 15 minutes or 15 or 20 minutes just to make sure that we have a homogeneous mixture, we set it up to saturate again, and saturation of 700 kPa and the saturation volume has been recorded as well. Uh, the same procedure has been done for a uh, consistency index of 0.8. And um, based on our analy analyzation and um, our uh, formulas that we've generated, we come up with a 35% of foam loss for a consistent index of 0.5 and 46% foam loss for a consistency index of 0.8. Uh, so an interesting uh, point here uh, is that, so ideally when we are, um, when we are testing soils with different consistent index, the, the soil that has a higher consistent index, which means that it has lower water content, uh, it should absorb more water. And by absorbing more water, it means that the liquid drainage is high. So foam loss has to be higher, which there is. And, but the thing is, um, if, we, if we wanna compare the saturation, the volume of water that was required to saturate the conditioned soil of a consistent inks of 0.5. It is actually like the same as uh, this, the volume needed to saturate the cell for consistent inks of 0.8, which we believe uh, it's because of the high value of foam injection ratio, which is 100%, and it uh, compensated for uh, the excess absorption of water, which happens in a uh, consistent index of 0.8. Um, I have to mention that this is an ongoing study. It's CSM, but a bigger um, scale study. So um, this has been studied, this has been tested and experimented for different kinds of soils, like it would be sand, silt, clay, and other um, soils. And it's been tested with different foam properties, like different FIRs, uh, different concentration of foam, and different foam product. So I would highly recommend uh, that uh, stay tuned for our paper, which is going to come out in uh, a couple of months. And uh, due to that, unfortunately, I was able to provide you guys with one set of results. And just to uh, wrap up, so our conclusion was to kind of like, as we all know, like cohesive soils have higher absorption capacity due to their mineralogy and higher tendency to absorb water will result in higher liquid drainage and higher liquid drainage will result in less stable foam and thus higher foam loss, which we have established all of this in our experiments. So thank you all for your time and um, I would be happy to answer any questions. <laughs> Great, thank you. Do we have people who wanna jump in with questions? I see a bunch of muted microphones. I'm sure there must be some questions. Um, I'm just curious where you'll have the next paper. Um, so I think the first draft is gonna come out and like by the end of April. And if we all agree on it, I'm pretty sure it's gonna come out soon. All right. 
I am going to stop recording.